Hey everybody, Boris on Speaker Forest. Welcome to our weekly technicals for October 22nd, October 26, 2018. FX Follies continues. That's really the story in FX land here as the dominant stories essentially rolling over into the fresh week. The dominant stories in Europe, of course, is the fight between the Italians and the European Commission on their budget, uh, which is going to be then enhanced by the ECB meeting later in the week. Um, in UK, the continued wrangling over Brexit. And um, in US, the big question of whether we peaked as far as growth goes in Q2 and now are starting to see slowdown as we walk into the uh, end of the year. Those are still the dominant themes fundamentally, and they are expressing themselves very clearly on a technical basis. The levels actually have really not changed much since last week. As a matter of fact, they pretty much stayed the same, according to my read, with 14 still support, 17 still the big resist. Uh, in yen, it's 111, 114, and in pound, it's 32.29 as the key levels. They've just sort of gotten more compressed. We're still edging around all those levels, looking, looking, looking for some sort of resolution. Now, the calendar this week is um, actually sort of just back-end loaded, but it does have some pretty significant data sets on the economic front. But of course, the political climate is going to dominate, dominate trade as an overlay to, the, to whatever economic structure we have here. So economically, we got the PMI flash data coming up on Wednesday. We really don't have anything until essentially Wednesday as far as important data. PMI data will be interesting. We'll be interesting to see if, um, uh, if we have any kind of a bounce off of the mid-50 readings that we've had in PMIs. Kathy is bearish the euro. She thinks because of the weaker zoo, softer industrial production, there's generally a chance here for softer readings that could impact the euro a little bit front of the week as we as we go forward. Then midweek, um, not even midweek, but about Thursday, we get the ECB meeting, which is going to be very critical. What's interesting about this, though, by the way, of course, is that before the ECB meeting, we will finally have the official presentation of the Italian budget to the European Union. And as we closed out trade on Friday, there was a lot of talk about the fact that the Italians may have backed off their more extravagant plans for fiscal expansion and now just want to run a 2.1% budget versus 2.4%. If they do that, if they do that, it'll be a big win for the Europeans. It'll be a positive trade on, on the euro itself because it will suggest that there's much more fiscal control within the union. And more importantly, it will really, I think, allow Mario Draghi to go full on hawkish on Thursday, essentially reiterate the, uh, the theme that they're ready to taper, ready to start uh, normalizing policy and starting beginning of 2019, they're gonna start raising rates. So they're very attached to this particular narrative um, and it's only Italy that could scuttle the whole plans. So if Italians come in line, that should be very positive for the Euro as the, uh, as the week develops. And then end of the week, we have the GDP data uh, coming out of the U.S. And this is where the whole peak U.S. growth thesis comes in because we're looking now for third quarter to be full percentage point lower than Q2. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. We Kathy is definitely bearish dollar on this. Trade activity, retail sales have weakened. Certainly we have, we have seen a slowdown in, um, uh, in spending. And I think all of that is going to begin, become reflected as we move into, um, into Q3s. And you've seen that in the dollar very clearly as far as the charts go. So let's go take a look at the charts here and just see what's, uh, what's showing up here on the majors. So Euro is holding bid relatively well around this 1450 level. Uh, today's price action is on Friday, pretty positive. We closed pretty much to the highs of the day and engulf last yesterday's big decline. This is really all Italian jitters, finding support right underneath the 500 SMA, finding support well in front of this peak um, swing lows here at around uh, 1300. And now the big question is, can they build on that? I think if we, uh, uh, if we open up the week with a move through 1550, that would provide a very, very strong evidence for a decent double bottom over here and potentially a move back up through the 1600. If we, if, if we sort of have the, the absolute perfect Euro bull scenario of Italians coming in a little bit lower in their, in their budget, so the Europeans swallow whatever you know, minor excess of 2% that they, that they uh, want to propose. Um, PMI is coming in more or less in line, nothing, nothing drastically bad. And then Draghi, of course, ended a week essentially delivering what I expect to be a relatively hawkish message. All of that, all of that provides impetus for a move through the 1600 
as um, as the euro begins to short cover squeeze here. Remember, there's a lot of people who got short on this on this big uh, drive lower and just died. I mean, the the price action just completely died. Now, if the longs can squeeze the shorts out, it's going to just tr create a tremendous amount of pressure because the farther we pull away from the 1400 the more the shorts are going to be forced to cover. So it's very likely that we could see 1600 This all, of course, assumes a positive euro scenario. Now, we start breaking the lows here, and we start going the other way, where we're below 1450 The whole game plan changes, and we could see um, a very serious deterioration all the way to a test of the swing lows at the 1300 So watching that very carefully front of the week, if we can consolidate, hold the lows from, from this week, uh, then the chances of us going up really increase um, quite significantly. Pound, on the other hand, is just doing its poundish thing, which is essentially one day up, one day down, as Brexit news is positive, Brexit news is negative. Overall, though, I think what's interesting when you look at this technically, and this is just kind of fascinating when you just peel back, is the technical narrative here is actually quite bullish, because what you're seeing is not just one, not just two, not just three, but really four higher lows. Basically, the market, from a price action point of view, is buying the dips on the assumption that come hell or high water, they will make a deal. And certainly the noises you heard at the end of the week this week was that, from, especially from Barnier, who said that they were like 90% there. It really, I mean, it all comes down at this point to the Brits caving in on the idea of Irish uh, backstop, of the Irish border backstop. If they can accept Northern and, and, and uh, Republic of Ireland, Northern Ireland and Republic of Ireland as a single unified uh, customs-free zone, and that in turn, of course, creates a customs union with UK, then really it becomes a much softer Brexit where um, the UK effectively stays um, within the customs union, is, is open to all of the negotiations. And I think what you're seeing, the reason why the market, I think, feels positive is this incredible frenzy from the business community in UK, including the agricultural community, the farming community, as they're approaching the deadline, after which literally all business stops dead cold because if they are outside of the rules, it doesn't matter what they can uh, offer to the market, nobody's gonna be willing to buy it. So there is just frenzy panic, especially amongst the, uh, the British farmers today about the idea that um, they have to sell their product forward. If they can't enter the European market, on a custom-free basis, it essentially makes uh, their whole business non-viable. So I think for all of the Brexiteria uh, pandemonium that's going on in the UK here, um, May is clearly trying to navigate this to a soft Brexit. There is, of course, still a possibility, and I think you always have to look at this possibility, that, that the hardcore MPs within her party literally could sabotage the deal. Um, but I think she's making a bet, basically, that a combination of moderate MPs and Labour will simply not allow Britain to be um, extra, what's the word, excommunicated, whatever, just simply expelled from the union uh, without any kind of um, economic uh, support. So the critical thing from a technical point of view, in my opinion, is watching the levels here. Uh, if news really gets hardcore bad, we close below, below 29, right over here, that suggests that hard Brexit may really become a reality and uh, further, further declines are certainly due. That this whole uptrend will then become broken because we, we lose the higher low structure. On the other hand, as long as we can hold bid over here and momentum builds for a more decent compromise that uh, May has a reasonable chance to pass through Parliament, then uh, we can break out all the way up to 32, 33. Now, my friends in UK who are a lot more skeptical and dubious of uh, this a positive scenario, think that ultimately it's going to get scuttled. But um, I think right now, if you're just simply trading off of what we know fundamentally and how the technicals look, as long as this level holds, you got to be long and strong. Now, turning to the uh, yen, which has been telegraphing, I think, the same story and over again, that we're topping. The yen also, I mean, it, 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 it's, a, it's a twofold story here. We're kind of topping and rising at the same time. I don't want to make it sound like it's, it's a completely clean break to the downside, because if you look at this on a longer term basis, you still have a rising pattern here. You still have higher lows. And truly, a truly dollar negative scenario would break the 1150 level. 
right? But clearly you see just massive sell-offs, not just a corrective move here, but just pretty much a massive sell-off right back to the original breakout levels. That's indicative of the fact the market just is not seeing the dollar positive story. This is despite the rising rates and all the things that we're seeing here. Basically, the market is saying to the Fed, yeah, 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 you can talk a big game, but you're not going to raise rates uh, much beyond the point you already have now because the economy is going to slow down materially if you keep on doing that. We already have the housing sector essentially in a quasi-recession at this point as we go forward. So I think um, the market is simply running ahead of the Fed by, by six months, and that's why you're seeing the dollar really peter out here. What will convert this if we have a surprisingly strong GDP, if, if uh, the peak thesis get, kind of gets blown away by, by the data? Yes, could, we will see 1,300, and we could have a resumption back up to the 1,400, which is still a big resistance point. But beyond that, really hard to get long and strong um, uh, on the yen. We did buy the yen just on a dip recovery because it was coming down to the 500 SMA after a big, big sell-off, but it was just a pure knee-jerk bounce back reaction. I don't have a strong conviction that the uptrend resumes here. As a matter of fact, what I want to be watching here is for any kind of failures, because if I close, if we close below 1200, um, yes, it's going to be a sort of a test of this uh, double bottom. Really, what we need to, to, to fully get bearish is a close below 1175. If we can do that, that creates a much more bearish construct and puts us right on path towards 110 as we go forward. So that's kind of how the major shape up this week. A lot of very interesting stories, both fundamentally and technically, and we'll see how it plays out as the week goes.